the week of. Begin. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, the week of. Also titled, Worst Week. Two fathers with opposing personalities come together to celebrate the wedding of their children. They are forced to spend the longest week of their lives together, and the big day cannot come soon enough. TV Ugh. 14, one hour and 56 minutes, comedy, April 27th, 2018. This, the end of this movie could not come soon enough. It was one of the I'm worst gonna bring things it down. I've seen in a very long this, time. This is bad, even by Adam Sandler standards. This is bad. This is definitely one of the worst Adam Sandler movies I've seen. It is, it, now out of all the ones that I've seen, for sure it's the worst. I, there's some that I just refuse to see because yeah. they look really awful, mm-hmm. so I don't know. But I'll break it down. Break it down. Real sim- real simple like. Adam Sandler's daughter is marrying Chris Rock's son. son. Mm-hmm. Adam Sandler is a good father. Chris Rock is a bad father. He's not around. But he's a rich dad, uh, and Adam Sandler is a poor dad. He's rich. Adam Sandler's poor, but Adam Sandler, you know, will do whatever it takes to make his daughter happy. Chris Rock tries to just throw money at everything. Adam Sandler won't let him. End of the movie happens. It's a pretty, I don't want to say a poor wedding, but a low budget wedding. It's a ghetto daughter wedding. Daughter says, it's a, yeah. That's what one of the characters yells out. Uh, and then at the very end, Chris Rock does nothing to be redeemed. He's still a jerk, and Adam Sandler is a good guy. The end. Uh, well, Chris Rock does emotionally uh, no. change. Yeah, he does. Nope. Because he. Nope. I'll tell Not you why. Not enough for me. No, he. he I, I agree. I agree with you. He he doesn't take any journey at all. He automatically becomes a different person. But he's talking oh. about how, at the very end, when he sits on the the steps, mm-hmm. he's like, "Sunday. Why isn't everyone?" Why is everyone sleeping? We got, we got, we need to play Parcheesi or whatever he says. Like, we just need two more people and we can play Parcheesi. And it's like his whole focus has changed to, oh, I want to be with family. And he says, oh, when's the next time we're going to all be together like this? We got to take advantage of it. And that was his journey. That was his, he understands now. Oh, this is important. Uh, not mm, earned no. at all. No, what I'm saying, no. <laughs> they, he does change, but, it's not earned in any way. It was, he was the worst character in this movie. He was really bad. Well, mm, I don't know if he's the worst. Not the worst. The, the friend was so bad. Yeah, she was definitely the worst. She was probably the worst. Oh gosh, the whole thing, the whole thing was awful. So, okay. This movie, uh, let me break it down for you now. Okay. I'll do a better job. I'm sure. This movie, encapsulated exactly what it's like to throw a wedding. You deal with yeah. a bunch of people who have opinions you don't really care about and are bickering over different things and just having family. Everything will go wrong. Yeah, having all your family together, there's like just annoying traits that everyone has. Not my family, of course, like, you know, mm. but just families mm. in general. Uh See, you don't know what it's like to be around your family when there was a wedding being planned, like your sister's, because you were gone. Why well, was there for my wedding that was planned? Yeah. <laughs> but anyways, the it's more it's more of a family reunion than even a wedding planning issue. Um, yeah. Because you have everyone getting together, and everyone oh. is grating on each other. They're like oh. just annoying to each other, and they do mm. they. They make that come across really well, but they, that's all they do. They don't make it come across in a fun way at all. They're like, Hey, you know, this annoying thing that happens when you're with family sometimes here it is (laughs) experience it for two hours. And that's all we're going to do. And it's so frustrating to watch because it was exhausting. Yeah. All it was like, it stresses me out movies like this where Mm -hmm. there's all that. Well, yelling and, and tension and stuff like that. It's like, ah, oh, I, I can't enjoy this. Well, that's what I, I texted you. I was like, the only joke in this whole show, in this whole movie, is mm-hmm. the characters are exhausting to watch. That's the only joke yeah. that they're trying to show. Like, oh, you, you know how you have someone who does this thing in your family? Isn't that so annoying? Ha, 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 ha. And it's like, oh, this is terrible. And it's just it's that. It's like, yeah, and I don't want to be around that person. <laughs> 
Just because it's in this movie doesn't make it funny. It just reminds me of how much I hate it. Now, I have to admit something, though. Uh, that you loved Adam Sandler's accent? <laughs> no. That was, that was. It wasn't even like an accent. It was almost like a. It was his dumb like character. He was doing like a, a Christian Bale, like lowering his voice for Batman. I don't even know. It's when he plays a dumb guy, like on SNL or. Right. He does that weird voice. It was yeah, like. No, I know. It was like half of that. It was like him yeah. normal versus plus half, like 50% Adam Sandler, 50% dumb character. I don't even know if there's a name. If he has a name for it, but yeah, it's Adam Sandler. <laughs> but it was that high pitched, like doo 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 type character, <laughs> yeah. but not fun. <laughs> no, not at all. And it was uh, so bad. His wife, his wife. Ugh, I, I don't like her, Rachel Dratch. Yeah, I don't. But I don't know if it's like. Well, she plays that I, character I, a lot. I was going to say a testament to maybe she's just a great actress because everything she's in, she's similar to this and it mm-hmm. drives me nuts. Yeah. Which is like the intention. So I guess she's really good. Yeah. I don't know. She's really good at being really annoying. Yeah. Um, yes. But no. So the point I was making, the uh, the thing I have to confess, this movie oh, did make me cry. Oh, jeez. Yeah. Uh, go on. When at the end, when Adam Sandler is apologizing to his daughter and he's crying mm-hmm. and she's crying, I thought he did such a good job in that moment. I thought it came across like it felt very legitimate that he, you know, he was just like, I'm so sorry. I made this all about me. I was trying to feel important. And I just want to give you everything I can. And being a dad of daughters and feeling like the same way, I was like, oh, crap. And I started crying a little bit. <laughs> and uh, it got me. So and this I, is your favorite M. Sandler movie then? Uh, the whole movie was building to that one moment. The All the yeah. annoyance, all the stress, all everything was building to that one moment. And I think intentionally. Oh, no, for sure. Building to that one moment. And uh, it's not worth it. It's to get to that moment. It's an hour and 45 minutes of Uh. obnoxious, not funny, just terrible jokes that, I mean, the only joke that they even do is Uh drop stuff on the old guy's head and pretend like he was a World War II vet. Okay, I kind of liked the old guy. I hated like, him. Like, oh really? Yeah. I mean, it wasn't great. Don't get me wrong, but I, there, there was a like I, I liked when they threw him in the foam pit. That was I, funny. I, okay, have you been in a foam pit like that? Uh, sort of. Yeah. Like, I... it's awful. You can't move. <laughs> and like the fact that he's got no legs to help like push himself up, I'm yeah. like he would die so fast. So there's a clip on the internet of uh, Nitro Circus. Do you ever watch Nitro, uh-huh. Nitro Circus? Uh, a little bit, yeah. There's a street bike Tommy who's like the bigger guy in the group. He okay. jumps off a crane or uh, a platform that's probably 50 feet in the air, 100 feet in the air into a foam yeah. pit that's made for the motorcycles. Yeah. But he goes down like 15 feet into the foam. Yeah. And you can't move. They There's like 20 guys that jump into the foam pit and it's just throwing foam out. And it took him like an hour to find the guy and rescue him from the foam pit. It's, it's awful. And it's like, it's, I don't, I don't know if the word is like claustrophobic, but it's like, it's fear inducing, right? Because mm-hmm. it almost feels like, like what I imagined being stuck in like a legit quicksand would be. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Cause you're, you're going down. You can't, you try to boot, you know, you're trying to use your legs to boost yourself up. But when you push, you just kick things down because it's so like formable. Yeah. And or like if you reach up to grab, you're just pulling stuff down with you. Like there's nothing to get your body moving upwards. It's like it's the worst thing. I would imagine it's similar to falling through the ice on a lake, just yeah. not cold, where you're like, yeah, you you feel something solid and you try to use it to push yourself up, but it just goes away and just breaks underneath. It just you. gives. Yeah, it's it's oh man, it sucks. 
But so yeah, that was seeing that. I, I, it, I was like, oh no, for sure. There's no way that someone could get out of there with just arms, especially <laughs> an old man. I did think that was funny. I thought that was a funny moment. But then they kill him. That's what ends up killing the dad. And then Steve yeah. Buscemi has this weird moment with him in the Ugh. where he's like, oh, it was just it was uncomfortable. No, yeah. Um, okay, so we'll break it down. I hated everything mm-hmm. with Adam Sandler's wife. I hated everything with Steve Buscemi, everything with the friend. Well, pretty much all the friends of the daughter. Yeah, they were really bad. I hated the the kid from rehab. The uh, the that chubby drove me nuts. The chubby kid with curly hair. No, no, no. The the Re- one who no, oh remember, Noah like no triggers. Yeah, yeah. The I, music is a trigger. I thought you said. I thought when you were saying rehab, that was like another show or something. Oh no. Um. But that kid too, well, curly hair. Yeah, he was really bad, the rehab kid. And, but his parents were yes. so annoying. Yeah, they were really bad. Here's the, here's the crazy thing, right? Yeah. Uh, Adam for for being for being a bad Adam Sandler movie, uh-huh. and him having a really annoying accent, you know, voice and everything. Yeah. He still might be the best thing about the movie. Oh yeah. Because uh, it, either his, his that, character was good, that or and the, his acting was. His daughter or the daughter was good. The, the husband, the new husband. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, just if if not for his, you know, weird voice, uh-huh. like he would have been perfectly fine. Yeah, there was uh, like his, like his character was good and his story was good and and all that stuff. It's just everyone around him. Maybe he's figured it out. He's like, hold on, I'll just surround myself. <laughs> And I'll write these characters so badly that, like, I look like the good guy. I mean, and he was the good guy, you know? That that theory probably holds up if you compare it to most of his movies. The, but the problem is, I, I I would like to think that that theory holds up, except for he uses the same people in all of his movies, right? So why didn't it work for the other ones? What do you mean? It did it's, work for the other ones. For his other movies? Yeah, he, you think he's the best in all of his movies? Not in all the movies, but he's he's better than all the annoying characters in all his movies. There's always a character yeah. who's way more annoying than he is in all of his movies. Yeah, it's always it's always Steve Buscemi or uh, Rob Schneider. Oh gosh, that would have been the that would be the only thing to make this movie worse is Rob Schneider in any form. So there's supposed to be three or four more Netflix Adam Sandler movies coming out. I don't know. Okay, so that one that you sent me yesterday, is that one of them or is that a different movie? Like it, its own deal. The uh the Meyerowitz uh yes. stories? Is that what it was? Yes. I I'm not sure if that's one or not. I don't know if that counts technically. But it is a Netflix movie, right? I don't that's what I'm saying. I'm not sure if it is or not. Uh but that that one is supposed to be good. And I think we'll eventually do it on the podcast, but I need a break from Adam Sandler after watching this. Oh, well, please. This, please, yes. This one killed me. I will say that I, I to a point, I liked the uh, the hotel guy. Oh, um, I really didn't like his character. Well, F, uh, okay, but it got it got a little overdone towards the end. Yeah. But I did <sighs> I liked that the whole place was like leaking and they were like, having to put like buckets on the tables and stuff like that. Yeah. I thought that was funny. Until we get to like that, that dance floor scene. Yeah. Why? I, 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 I get like it's in the middle of the dance floor. Okay. Move around it. Like why is every single character like bumping up against it? Like you can do this somewhere else. It's bothering me and I get. It, it all was to eventually knock the thing over. Yeah. Fine, I, but like I fully expected, it made no sense them to drop Chris Rock from the chair head first into it. Oh, see, okay. So when I was watching, me and Chris were watching. I thought someone, and I thought it'd be Chris Rock too. But I thought his head. I thought they were going to lift him too high into the ceiling, uh-huh. and it was just going to create this like oh, huge like waterfall <laughs> that just pour, yeah that pours down on him like a brown water. Yeah, that's what I thought was going to happen. Um, but yeah, that was a uh, pretty gross, which is fine. Yeah. Adam Sandler does gross stuff in his movies. I didn't have a problem with the bucket dumping over. I had a problem with everyone just like bumping up against it and like well, it- getting their heads in it. And uh, <laughs> that made no sense to me. So when the wedding party came in and did their dance, 
for me, what's that? I hated that part. It, it made sense to me why they were bumping into it. Cause they had this choreographed dance and they had sunglasses on, so they couldn't see anything. And so they're yeah. trying to do their dance and they kept bumping into it. Like it was annoying, but they were just annoying anyway. So that part. It was the friend. She was awful. She was really annoying. So the bucket at that part made sense. But when they were all dancing, it's like, why not get away from the bucket? There's no reason yeah. at this point. You guys don't need to be around it. But they're all just dancing around it still. Yeah, I don't know. It was pretty pretty dumb. I did like how uh it eventually caused like the big fire. I thought that was funny. Yeah. I uh it, it was whatever. <laughs> But I, but I like how Adam Sandler was like, hold on, hold on. And he like pulls everyone aside while everyone's like trying to get out of the fire. Yeah. He's like, hold on. He's like, I want to talk first. I thought that was kind of funny. And then you, cause then it, he has that moment, right? And you almost forget about the fire. And when it kind of s- slowly like zooms out, you're like, oh yeah, there's still a big fire going on in the background. <laughs> oh man, this, I, yeah, I didn't enjoy any of it. Only the, just the one scene where he talks to his daughter, that was the only part that felt good. Uh, that, I mean, that was okay. I kind of felt it was a little overacted. Yeah, maybe. Like, he could have done it, just toned it down just a little bit, yeah. like, with the hysterics. <laughs> the hysterics. I don't know. Yeah. I, I feel, I felt like it was, I felt like it was really well done. Look, I get it. You are relatable to Adam Sandler in almost every way. That's fine. <laughs> I am more of the Chris Rock character. <laughs> That's what I've always said. I've always thought of you as the Chris Rock in this relationship. Uh, so I want to talk about. But I used to think one... I was Chris Farley, and this was Beverly Hills Ninja. Oh yeah. <laughs> one one thing that I thought they kept trying to land, yeah. and then it just wasn't working for me was the fact that okay, Chris Rock was a bad dad, and it's like even he knew. And when he was doing like his his toast at the rehearsal dinner, uh-huh. and he kept making like the little lines about not being there, or, you know, at least I didn't hit my kids, or you know, so I, I was like it. It wasn't working for me. I was like, okay, I, no, it's not that funny. Yeah, no, it was all, I mean, it was all, everything, every character was so insecure in trying to find validation. Yeah. It was exhausting because when people do that in real life, it is, uh, the only word I can think of is repulsing, but yes, like it's just, I don't know. It's just so hard to be around people who are like that because it's so exhausting where they're, they're trying so hard because they're insecure that they make it so much worse for themselves. Yeah. One thing that I thought, I thought would have been maybe funnier. I don't know. It was still funny, right? So it was shown that he did all the work on this hotel. Yeah. But like they, they took the cheap way. Like he said, Oh, you know, I told you we should have went with this or we should have went with that. And like it all eventually like was the reason like the sprinklers didn't turn on and the, the pipes were leaking cause, cause they didn't listen or whatever. Mm-hmm. They went the cheap route. I thought it would have been funnier if, if it just went to show that like he's really proud of this hotel that he like they did work on. Maybe it's like his first big job or something like that. Yeah. So that's where they have the wedding. And like it just shows throughout the movie that he's just not a good contractor, <laughs> and everything that he did was like failing, yeah. you know, and that the pipes were leaking and the sprinkler system didn't work, just because he's like not, he was like so proud of it, and he's just not good at his job. He's not competent. Yeah, no, yeah, like it was all his fault. Well, I think, but I didn't have a problem with the way they did it. Yeah, well, I mean, it just wasn't very good. I I think that's yeah. kind of what they were going for. Or well, see, that's what I. I felt like it was mixed. It kind of felt like that, but at the same time, like I said, he he would point out, like, I told you to not go with those pipes, or I told you to not do this. Why'd you do this? It was like he was embarrassed by everything happening was the point. Not so much that he was, like, he was proud of it because he was trying to show it off, but... It's it's two diamonds now. (laughs) Um yeah, it's just I don't know, man. A, I I did like when they tried to turn the sprinklers on, and it's just like a puff of dust came out. Yeah, so water water has been pouring from the pipes the entire movie, and when yeah. a fire starts and they actually need water to come out, nothing <laughs> comes empty. out. 
that was that was yeah. a funny moment. That was a funny joke. That was funny. But uh, that was it, man. It's really, really bad. It's uh, it's almost two hours long exactly, and it fills yeah. every minute of every 10 bit hours. of it. Yeah. <laughs> um. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's okay. Here, here's the thing. Maybe you can uh, clarify this for me. Okay. At the end, mm-hmm. so there was the the bridesmaid. Who eventually hooks up with like the weird kid? Yeah, and he's like, "Hold on," he's like, "Give me thirty seconds and let me clean up." And then he runs up to his room and he starts taking down all the pictures on the wall. Uh-huh. Who was that? Was that Adam Sandler's daughter? Yeah. Okay, because I th- I thought that, but for like a split second, it looked like it was that that bridesmaid girl. No, but I was like, I didn't get a good enough. Look. I was kind of tired, so I didn't get a good enough look, and I was like, I don't, I'm not gonna rewind it. I don't care. No, it was, it was definitely Adam Sandler's daughter. Okay, that's what I thought. I, I, I didn't get a good look at it. But, uh, okay, that, that's fine. Well, that's uh. It sounds like our time is oh up. <laughs> oh yeah, it's about to start getting loud. <laughs> well, uh, there's really nothing else to say about the week of, anyways. I think uh, no, that's pretty much it. It was. It's a bad one. What? It's really bad. It, if he had not done the voice and then not made this movie, it would have been so much better. <laughs> that is true. If this movie never existed. I would enjoy it a lot more. So much more. Um. But yeah. So our next movie is Kiss Kiss Bang Bang with uh, Robert Downey Jr. Haven't seen it yet, yes. but it should be a ton better. Then the week of should be yes. should be hopefully fingers crossed, uh, but we will be back in a couple of days with that. For a dollar, you can go listen to it right now over on Patreon. Uh, li- Woo! Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter. Yeah, right. I seen that pod, and uh, we'll be back soon. Thanks for listening. Yeah, yeah.